So just a little bit about myself and actually the, the doctor of physical therapy students and one student to be, we have Jenna in here with us. She just got accepted into our PT program and we'll be starting in the fall, yay. So we have our physical therapy, I'm, I'm at faculty in the physical therapy program. We're actually called, the long name of it is the Division of Biokinesiology and Physical Therapy. And not much people know what biokinesiology is, but it is the study of the body and movement. And so it, it sort of go hand in hand. And Jeanette has just put into, or Dr. Brown, sorry, has just put into the chat um, the link to the USC Ameritai website so that you can find all the information about the events I was talking about and find recording for this. If you want to take, you want to reflect back on it or want to share this information with anybody, will be on that website. Um, so I'm part of this program with, with these wonderful students. I, so I, I also am in the faculty practice and I'm in the faculty practice right now. I'm in one of the conference rooms. And we have been working really hard in our faculty practices, all our pra faculty practice sites to keep people safe so they can still get physical therapy during this pandemic. We are essential workers here. We have stickers on the floor to keep everybody six feet apart. We're all wearing masks. I'm, I'm just taking my mask off and I have a closed room just for this and I will disinfect this room, but I, didn't, I wanted to have a connection with you. So I did take my mask off just for this moment, um, but we have, um, private rooms, we have spaced out gym area. Um, we also just uh, had a, a nice little um, ad that we put out to share how we're able to stay safe during this pandemic and provide care for people that need it. And another part of my practice is doing just like we are meeting here over Zoom. I'm doing exercises and evaluating and assessing people just like we might be doing a little bit with you. I, we're not gonna do any formal assessments, but we'll be able to watch you move a little bit during our session today. Um, so I'm, I'm happy for the technology we have to our advantage and I'm utilizing it with videos and recordings and uh, patients can take home videos of themselves moving as well as me moving um, for a long lasting carryover into their home and into uh, wellness because during physical therapy, I oftentimes give exercises and then I check back in three months and. Where did my, my picture handout go that I drew you? That beautiful stick figure drawing of your exercises go. And it, sometimes it's got, gotten lost in the pile of mail. Um, but with videos sometimes and with regular video check-ins on telehealth, I'm able to keep people moving more often. I'm also uh, teaching in the PT program and I was teaching a like live class of a hundred or more students at a time and now it's, it's packed down to smaller Zoom rooms of 10 to 12 students. Um, I do feel like I, I make a better connection with the smaller groups of students that, than I did in the, in the large rooms, which is some advantage, but I do miss seeing them and passing them in the hall and seeing how everybody's doing. So I'm glad that I get to see some of them here and check in and see, watch them at work, working with you guys. So I'll be dancing around between the Zoom rooms, maybe literally to see them at work with you all. Um, but I, but we, are, we are adapting in my clinic work and we're adapting in my teaching work. So we're hoping that we can help you adapt in your world to be able to be well in this and not just get by. We wanna be, have you be well. This is my family. Um, I'm also a mother and a wife. <laughs> and apparently now I am a homeschool teacher. I have become a third and fifth grade teacher I'm learning about um, subjects and predicates and uh, alliteration and all these words that I haven't heard <laughs> in a long time um, and having a lot of fun with it and making a lot of connections with my, with my kids and my husband, but it does create a time challenge between work and family balance um, and trying to make sure uh, everything is getting the attention that it needs, including my house. And we got a new dog. <laughs> and so. I feel the stress, um, but I, I, I love that exercise and all the things that I do for my wellness is my relief. So I wanted to let you know that you're not in the, you're not in a boat by yourself. <laughs> I'm in the same boat as you. And so I hope to learn from you just as much as um, you hope to learn something from this group here. That's my, my daughter in the upper right corner. She does, she does, she's been doing hula. She was actually selected as a soloist just prior to the pandemic and the competition got canceled, unfortunately. But the comp they, we don't have a competition as soon as we're cleared. She will be the soloist to 
represent Halau o Hula Onolani. So it, I'm very proud of her. And I'm so proud of her that my new challenge during this pandemic is I joined the Hula Halau. So I am doing Hula with the old ladies, with the older ladies. Um, anybody over 40 is considered the older ladies. <laughs> um, it just means we don't have to bend down as low, thank goodness. <laughs> Uh, if you've ever seen hula, there's a lot of uh, bending down and, and shaking your hips. And I, it's a new exercise for me. And it, it's been a fun challenge and kept me moving during this pandemic. But normally on Fridays um, uh, at, at lunch, I normally hold a community exercise program at the Hazard Park. I don't know if you guys have been, if, if you guys have all probably been near USC, but the health science campus near Keck Hospital, there's a park there. You, I think most people visibly see the baseball field. Um, and there's a, there's a recreation center in that same park that has a little gym. And a lot of the hospital staff play pickup games at lunch and after work. But um, on Fridays, I do take over the gym at, at lunch and I hold a community exercise program because I was discharging a lot of my patients and they would you know, stop exercising. So we exercise together. It started with my patients and now we've opened it up to the community of around uh, the health science campus of USC. And some people come from far actually, from El Segundo, because they love exercising with us. So this is one of uh, me exercising with them actually near the old uh, county hospital. If you guys have ever seen that big, scary white building, they have gym equipment along the side of the building, but they don't show anybody how to use it. So we took a walk around that community, community wellness center and tried out every single machine. Everybody tried everything. It was really fun. And I brought some exercise bands, so we even exercise our way over there. <laughs> so thank you for joining me on this uh, virtual community exercise class so that we can all move together. We already did the poll because we uh, I found out that a lot of this room is very active. And so hopefully we can keep you active because now who knew we would be, um, <laughs> who knew that we are going to be eight months into this, right? and maybe into the new year. So thank you for being, oh, thank you for being very active and contributing today. I also want you to consider that your wellness is not just physical wellness. I know maybe you're thinking that this is a, this is the physical therapy part of it. So we're just gonna move around, but it, it does, it does mean that you have to be mentally well and you, you need to have social well-being as well. Those are all important parts of our wellness. And that is the World Health Organization's definition of wellness is not just physical health, but what you will find is as we exercise together and as we bring smiles to each other's faces, you're gonna see that physical wellness does spill over into your mental wellness and, you're, and we're gonna be social and communicate with each other and, and engage together. So you will have some social interaction today. So we, we wanna be comprehensive in our, our opinion of wellness. Does somebody have a question? Okay, sorry, I just heard, heard somebody on mute for a little bit. So, so we can't stop aging, unfortunately. I, I, do, I do like to say that I, I try to do some magic in making sure people that don't, are, are averse to exercise, I try to help make them feel like they can exercise. I have, I have met people that don't like to sweat and we're in Southern California and I'm from Hawaii and we all sweat when we move around. So I've even convinced those type of people that it's fun, it's fun to exercise and that you can help with wellness. And one of the big buy-ins is because we can't stop aging. We're, we're all aging, even, even as you sit listening to me, we're all aging. But we can, the, the way we age can be, we can have an influence on how we age. We can either take this uh, a steeper decline or we can have healthy behavior habits that help us have a slower, a slower decline. We can't stop it, but we can have an effect on that. And I, and I think I'm reminded of this even more right now in the middle of a pandemic because we, never, we can't prepare for health emergencies, right? We might catch a cold, we, we might get COVID, um, but if we are on this green line and we've been taking care of ourselves, our decline will be different from somebody who hasn't been taking care of themselves and might dip below. If this is a line of function where it starts to really affect our quality of life, we might dip below that, that line pretty quickly. But if we were doing healthy behaviors and we do have a little dip in our health, we still may stay above that, that line where it doesn't affect our quality of life as much. 
Sorry, just peeking at the chat. Um, exercise classes are on health on health science campus are open to the community. Um, we have a Facebook page and I have information at the end of my slide deck for that so that you can find out when we do resume our classes. Um, we just, it's, it's a live Facebook uh, link, um, but I also have my, my contact information is on the Maritai site and you can always reach out to me to find out if we've resumed our classes, but it's open to everybody in the public. And as another benefit, the American Health Association, uh, American Heart Association, sorry, um, really liked what we were doing. And so on the last exercise class of every month, they were bringing free uh, farm produce to the exercise classes. So if you exercise, you were going home with a full bag of fresh vegetables and fruits. So it, it was, it, I really love their support and it's a, just another um, reason to come and join us when we start again. <laughs> All right, so I want you to all think on what you're doing for exercises and see if you are having a comprehensive exercise program. So this is a book that I'm going to refer to today. It's actually on your on your on your PDF that I put into the chat, and I, I don't know if somebody can rechat that for me. Um, that it, this is a clickable link. Um, they they were mailing out free hard copies of this from the NIH. That's the National Institute of Health. Um, but they're no longer sending out print copies. And instead what they did is it's a free PDF form that's accessible at any time on, on their website. So this is the link if you click on here and I have it in multiple areas of this PowerPoint as well. Um, and we can put it into the chat um, if somebody's done that already. Thank you very much. Uh, but, it, but it has a lot, it has a well, thank you. Thank you, Wendy. It has a lot of information in it and it helps to point you toward a very comprehensive exercise program, okay? So, so we can use, I wanna see some act, screen activity. So if you, if you can open your cameras, if, if not, don't worry because it does slow down some people's internet. But do, you, do all of you do a warm up before you exercise? If you do, give me some waving hands. Do you warm up before you exercise? So a warm up means something low, low level activity that just gets your heart pumping a little bit, right? Some people do a little bit of that. I do recommend it because it does help with a little bit of injury and injury prevention. Good. I see some some wave, I saw a lot of waving hands, which is good. It's fun on my screen to see all the waving hands. Um, good. So you wanna you wanna do that, and it's actually good to do it before stretching. Stretching are the ones that you hold for long periods of time to allow a muscle to gain length, right? So I use the, the circus tent analogy, right? So if I have, if I am, my spine and my body is a circus tent, right? And if I have a muscle that's too tight or too loose, my circus tent's gonna pull over. So some of the, the, pull, the, the tension wires are gonna pull me. I'm not gonna be able to have good posture because I don't have good equal length and tension between all my muscles. So stretching helps us have a good balance between the front and the back the left and the right to be able to, before we exercise, to be able to exercise, okay? So if we warm up, we get blood pumping through our muscles and then we can stretch and now it's ready. It's more pliable and ready to stretch. So who's doing stretching exercises? I want you to clap your hands, really big claps. Oh, good, I see some people make sure they have stretching in their program. Good job, good job. Gotta have some stretching. If you're not having some stretching, let's think, we're, we're giving you some ideas. So you know where we're gonna pay attention in your, in your breakout room. You might need some stretches if you're not already doing it. Yeah, you can use the emoji for hand, hand emoji if you're not there. All right, then we do some strengthening. And I think that's probably the most common. That's what everybody associates exercise with is, I'm gonna try and make myself stronger. So we might do some level of exercise to build strength. We might do some level of exercise just to maintain our strength. We might do some level of exercises to prevent decline, right? So there's different levels of exercises. If you don't feel like you're ready to start like the ROCKS big exercise program and gain a lot of muscle, start with just thinking I'm gonna maintain my muscle and prevent decline, right? And then when you find out how fun it is, maybe you're gonna start to do a little bit more and a little bit more every day. So don't take off too much um, more than you can chew, right? I, I think a lot of times people get intimidated. Like you don't have to be a bodybuilder Although I see a lot of very fit people in this room. So, so keep it up. 
but strengthening is an important part of, of your exercise program, but you shouldn't do strengthening without doing a little bit of stretching as well, okay? Endurance. When I do a little bit of endurance exercise, then I feel like in this, in our confines of our home, we've lost a lot of endurance exercises. So we'll do a little bit of that. We want to do something where you're keeping your heart rate up for a long period of time. And balance exercises. Okay, who's doing balance exercises? I want you to tap your head. Gently, gently. <laughs> All right, who's doing balance exercises? All right. That makes an interesting image on my screen, which is so cool. <laughs> um, so balanced exercises are very important. It is like a muscle. I know some of you are saying, well, I'm just not good at it, so I don't do it. It is like a muscle where you can train it to get stronger and get better, but you can't get it better unless you try it, okay? There's a lot of things that go into balance and maybe some of our students can share with you in your breakout rooms how vision and your vestibular system and all our sensors in our muscles and joints help us have a good balance. All right, who does a good cool down at the end of the program? Does anybody do a cool down? I see some thumbs up. Okay, give me a big thumbs up if you, if you do a cool down. Some shaking your heads. It might not be too dissimilar from your warm up. actually. You can just do it at a slower pace, right? Something that we did nice and light to warm up, we can also use that to work to cool down. But it is also important for, um, for uh, injury prevention is to make sure we have a good cool down, okay? All right, so before we get moving, I wanna make sure that we're all safe when we move around in our rooms today, okay? Because I, I, I think this is very realistic. I oftentimes tell my patients how, how to try to do this at home and I'm imagining how they're gonna do this at home and they're describing their homes to me and how they can do it. We can actually see you in your homes if you're willing to share your, your cameras at all. Um, and if you don't wanna share this, totally fine. I don't want you to feel like you wanna get off this call if you don't wanna share. It's totally fine for you to watch other people's homes. Um, you can definitely see what my our clinic environment looks like. But ask questions if you're not sure about where you're exercising. Um, I want I want it to be open. There's no such thing as a bad question. Um, all these students know that I I never say there's a, a bad question. I I will answer any question and they will answer any question to the best of their knowledge. If you're feeling any pain or feeling unsafe with anything, just go ahead and wait and you can consult maybe your physical therapist, but maybe even your physician before you progress. But nothing what we do should be considered physical torture. We're talking about physical therapy, right? We're, we're being therapeutic to each other, okay? So by giving each other good ideas. Um, does anybody have ways to monitor their vitals? Anybody have any, any, are you, does anybody have a blood pressure cuff? Some people have that. Some people have a heart rate monitor. Some people have a pulse oximeter. Something that pinches on your finger. Ooh, some people have that. Who has a smartwatch? Ooh, a lot of smartwatches that might be able to take your heart rate. Yeah, a lot of people have different, a blood pressure monitor does count. A Fitbit does count. Those are very good things to use to monitor. Those are good things to make sure that you're not exercising too hard or that you're exercising enough to get your heart rate up. So we'll talk about that a little bit. Make sure you check your environment, make sure you're safe. I mean, we'll, well, if you have any questions, you can show us your environments, but make sure there's no loose rugs or things you can trip on, no wires, your laptops that you're connected to or your phones that are plugged into the wall, make sure that none of those wires will get, um, get tripped on, okay? And I like that I see some partners in the room because your partner can also tell you like, oh, you don't look so safe with that. And trust your partner's opinion. And if you don't have a partner in your room, we're gonna be your partner today. All right, so we're gonna do a little scavenger hunt so that we can be ready for exercise in the rooms, okay? So if you have a heart, a blood pressure cuff or heart rate monitor, go ahead and go and grab it. That's your little warm up. If you have it, go ahead and grab it. If it's in another room, I'll talk really loud so you can still hear me. <laughs> if, you're, if your smartwatch is plugged in somewhere, go grab it and put it on. Good job, some people have gone to get that. If you're still sitting here, you don't have a heart, 
a blood pressure cuff or a, a heart rate monitor, hold up your two fingers. This is your heart rate monitor. We all have one, yay. All the people that couldn't go get one, you still have one. We're gonna use it to take our heart rate. So you have a heart rate monitor, yay, okay. Perfect, perfect. All right, what else do we need? Does, do, does everybody have a calculator? So maybe we can calculate our heart rate. I have one, I have it on my phone. Smartphones are helpful. If Alexa's in the room, sometimes you can say, Alexa, what is 220 minus 21? <laughs> Calculators will help. Yeah, I think some people caught on to why I said that. <laughs> Actually, 31 was more fun than 21. Um, all right. Everybody got a calculator if you have one? Good. How about a timer? If you have a timer, go get one. Even if it's your um, cooking timer in your kitchen, go grab it. Get a little bit of warm up to go grab a timer. Might be right on your wrist on your watch. Might be next to your bed. I know your phone has everything. It has everything I've almost listed so far, except maybe the blood pressure. It does think it's our heart rate is a little different from our, our blood pressure, but a heart rate, it, it will do when you're exercising. Does anybody have exercise bands? You wanna go grab them? They usually come in different colors and the different colors, good, I see uh, some of our students have them too. So you, they can, you can see all the different colors we have. I have green, got some yellow on the online, good. I have, I have a pink one. We have some latex, non-latex. I do a whole class in the coming exercise on all the different exercises you can do is bands and loops. If you don't have it, don't worry. Don't worry, we're gonna use your body. If you don't have exercise bands, we're gonna use your body, all right? But if you have it, go grab it. How about, how about any, anybody got some weights? Any got some weights to lift? If not, see if you can go grab a soup can. Maybe if you haven't gotten out of your seat and you wanna, soup cans, Ashton has some soup cans that she's shaking around. If you see Ashton, she's gonna be in room seven. So if you're lucky enough to be in room seven. Water bottles work, water bottles work for, for the weights. And our body weight will also suffice for, for resistance. Does anybody have a yoga mat? Yoga mats might work. They, they're helpful for us to stand on to cushion our feet or to provide a little bit of balance challenge if you have that. Good, I see some thumbs up if you got it. Or any version of a yoga mat, there's all different kinds. Somebody's already sitting on their yoga mat. Great, great, great. All right, the last two is more for safety. I want you to make sure if you're gonna use a chair during this event, that it's not a chair that has wheels because it, 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 they, they will have a life of their own and sometimes scoot away from you when you're not thinking about it. So if you, if you are in a chair with wheels, can you go grab one with, with four legs or something sturdy or a stool or get near a couch might even work or a, a chair? It's a little bit harder to get out of that couch though, right? But if you have one, go go grab it, go get near it and bring bring us with you. <laughs> or a wall might work as a stable, a stable thing to stand next to. A wall or a stable counter. Make sure you're not next to something that'll be teeter tottery. Uh, we don't want anybody falling over. Okay, so everybody's all ready. They got all their gear, right? And Jeanette, do we have everybody in breakout rooms too? I'm just, as we're, I'm gonna finish up this activity. Okay, uh, I'll make sure, I'll let you figure that out because the next activity will be going into the breakout rooms, but let's all take your resting heart rate. Well, not, now that you've all warmed up a little bit, actually going to go grab all that great equipment. Let's find out your heart rate. So there's a couple of areas you can get your heart rate. And I have two pictures up on the screen here and it's in your your slide deck. Use your two fingers. This is your good heart rate monitor. Some of you can easily look at your apps, pull your app up on your watch. But 
go right below your ear, follow down your ear just a little bit and then come a little bit forward. And don't use your thumb because we have a pulse in your thumb that will kind of come get you off a little bit. So do you, be very broad, don't press too hard. You can actually occlude it, but just lightly press here. Does everybody feel a little thump, thump, thump under their, under their fingers? I'll give everybody a chance to try to get it. And if not, you can also try at your wrist. So take this off. On your wrist, you, on the thumb side of your wrist, on the thumb side of my wrist, I can see, use my same heart monitor and look for a pulse. I can't, don't stretch your wrist out, but if I have my wrist in a neutral position near the base of my thumb, in a little groove there, you might find a pulse there. So either one, you found it on your neck or on your, um, or on your wrist. I am going to, I'm going to time for 30 seconds. Everybody ready to count how many thumps you feel for 30 seconds, okay? Ready and go. Breathing and keep going. And stop. So that number times two gives you your beats per minute because we just counted your pulse for half a minute and we want to know your pulse for for per minute, right? And you're you're either warmed up from getting stuff, but you haven't done too much, or you've been resting, sitting, listening to me. So that's a good baseline. And after we exercise in these rooms, we want to increase that rate a little bit. So sometimes we say cleaning the house gets a little exercise, but because it's go and stop and go and stop, I actually don't find my heart rate increase. I want to try to get, especially with endurance exercises, try to get your heart rate up a little bit. I want to leave this equation in here. And you can use your calculator if you want to. You can read it out to Alexa and she'll tell you. But the most accurate way to find your max heart rate is 208 minus 70% of your age. And the easier way is 220 minus your age. And anybody that had a difficult, maybe we can take some time at the end to, to find your pulse. But 220 minus your age is also um, fairly accurate, but they found that this formula with, by Tanaka is more uh, more reliable than the uh, 220 minus your age, but either one. And if you Google heart rate calculator, there are a lot of good ones out there. So you don't need to have your calculator. If you've logged onto this Zoom, you have internet and you can do heart calculator and you can plug in your age and it'll tell you what your, um, your, your max heart rate is. And what we're trying to exercise in on a daily basis is between 64 and 76% is what um, the American Heart Association and the CDC recommend. So it's not too much, it's not trying to get to your max, right? So that's there for you to try it out. But today we have your baseline and we're gonna see if we can get it up a little bit, okay? So let's warm up together. Everybody in your safe place, go ahead and stand up. I'll give everybody a second to stand up. And I'm gonna play a little music and you don't have to be to the beat at all. You can, oh, hold on. And let me make my screen big, okay. Um, you can do it at whatever pace you want, but I want you to move around either marching in place, marching in place or, get my chair away, or stepping side to side, but moving until I stop the music. All right, everybody on their feet. I'm gonna try to play some positive music to give us some positive energy. Yeah. Yeah. I got this feeling inside my bones. 
It goes electric wavy when I turn it on. Off from my city, off from my home. We're flying up no ceiling when we in our zone. I got that sunshine in my pocket. Got that good soul in my feet. I feel that hot blood in my body when it drops. Ooh, I can't take my eyes off of it. Moving so phenomenally. Come on, like the way we rock it. So don't stop. When you dance, dance, dance Feel a good, good creeping up on you So just dance, dance, dance Come on, all those things I shouldn't do But you dance, dance, dance And ain't nobody leaving soon So keep dancing I can't stop the feeling So just dance I got that sunshine in my pocket Got that good soul in my feet I feel that hot blood in my body When it drops, ooh I can't take my eyes off of it Moving so phenomenally Come on, lock the way we rock it So don't stop, stop, stop Under the lights when everything goes no. Good job, everybody! <laughs> Now let's see if you can take your heart rate. If you want to count, let's just do it for 15 seconds. Ready and count. And rest. So that one you would have to time it by four because I only I only had you count it for 15 seconds. The most accurate is still counting it for the full 30 seconds, but did you, did, I just even felt my heart pumping a little bit more, right? And you didn't have to leave your home. <laughs> All right, I don't want anybody to cool down yet. So I'm gonna have, <laughs> I'm gonna have everybody go into their breakout rooms. Uh, Jeanette, if we can let everybody go into their breakout rooms and your students will leave you to a few more exercises and we'll do maybe let's do 10 minutes sorry and we'll come back together dr yavada do you still want me to be in room six with wendy or did you want me to be in a different room oh uh, so how that's, do i how it is. let's just do how it is okay are they choosing their own Kimmy, I'm going to make you host right now. Okay. I assigned um, the, um, the different students to their appropriate rooms because they weren't all assigned. But I didn't assign all the, all the attendees. So how do you get them into the room? I I had to uh, put the students into single. Uh, the students were all assigned already, but that's okay. We'll, we'll reassign people. I'm just putting other people into other rooms. Do you want me to stay in the main room or do you want me to go to one of the breakout rooms? Uh, you can go into a breakout room if you want. I am just gonna keep. It looks like nobody was divvied out, but uh, hopefully this is working. Yeah, it didn't. It didn't uh, automatically assign them. Yeah, and and there was no option to do that.
close to me. Everybody should be assigned. Okay. Uh, Rich, do you see a breakout room assignment and scooter? Come on. Oh my gosh, come on. Come on. Come on, come on. We gotta hurry. We gotta hurry. I gotta do this. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. No worries, no worries. You can join the room when you when you get
Last minute. Did you guys want to? Oh, in another Balanced activities are great ones to do. How do I hear? Uh, Just because that adds another layer of safety for you all. I think that's a good thing. Adding that element that's nice. Hi. Very good. Somebody else joining the room too. Patty, it was coming, you're doing it. Stop. You look <laughs> Did you not say something you want to try? No. You try yeah. something before yeah. it comes back. <laughs> yeah. The fact that you're not swaying all over. Yeah, very good balance. Let's do some stretches together. Challenge part two. In front of you. That's fantastic. But like I said, if it's too easy, Find a way to challenge yourself just a little bit more. Maybe it's narrowing that. I know this energy. Do you want to try some exercises? I'm going to close the rooms in a minute, actually. We can do some stretches. Opening up your chest, squeezing backwards. Don't let your elbows come out. Keep your elbows close to your side and then rotate out that way. You can see how tight that chest can be because everything we do is kind of relevant forward, right? So as we help with the posture, we squeeze the shoulder blades back. Squeeze them backward like this. So that we don't, if it's hard to do them like this, right? It helps us have good posture to do it like that. Good, and then we can try some leg things. It might be a little tougher. Let's see. Get one leg out straight and try to lift it up straight without letting it bend. So don't let it bend out. this way. All right, everybody's coming back. What? You're having fun. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. Nice job, Dad. And see a little bit of rosiness to everybody's face because you've all been exercising. <laughs> Great job. I'm sorry to end the party, huh? <laughs> well, I just, while, while I wanted to do a little cool down. So while I'm sharing you a little bit more about what we do as physical therapists, I thought we could do a little cool down to even show that even just sitting in your chair, you can do some exercises, okay? So I want you to sit, if you're on a, on a, on a chair, firm chair, I want you to sit at the edge of your chair and I want you to roll, roll your back rounded and arch it back, round it, arch back, and now find the middle, find the middle of that. So I don't, you have the end range of arching, end range slouching. Now find the middle, where's the middle? Can you get into the middle? I want you to pull your belly button in towards your spine without changing that posture. So you're in the middle of, of, right in the middle neutral spine, pull in your belly button. And now I want you to march your knees up and down, march your legs up and down without changing, without changing your posture. Sorry. And I'm actually doing it. I'm marching my legs just like this, marching my knees up and down, but I could be on a Zoom meeting and you wouldn't know that I'm exercising at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> Genius. <laughs> Genius, right? We're all trying to find time. I'm trying to teach. So now all the students in here are laughing because they know now what I'm doing while I'm teaching them. <laughs> I'm actually doing exercises on the lower part of the screen. I can put a band around my knees. Just have a little band, or I can use maybe just my hands. I'm gonna, but I'm still gonna have my middle posture because I don't want them to see that I've lost, I've slouched as the exercise. <laughs> and I'm gonna pull my knees apart. So it's all about creative 
praying, okay? So when you stay close to the my face, you can see that I'm excited. Unless I go like this. <laughs> Unless you really see me training. But I can do a little bit of exercises while I'm, 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 while I'm having a family Zoom, while I'm having a teaching Zoom, while I'm talking to a patient about their day, I can be exercising at the same time. So I want you to do some, I want you to do some creative exercising silently while I'm closing down. You can also just lift your legs up. I was just doing that in the big I'm just lifting my legs up. Okay, so everybody keep moving your legs. Keep trying to move your legs, but keep your neutral posture. We're gonna do a little bit of cool down. I'm starting my timer for two minutes while you guys cool down. I'm gonna just give you some final points while I'm closing our little, our quick zooming that, that hour went by so fast. But what you just experienced was a little bit about what we do in physical therapy is making sure that your wellness is very comprehensive, that you're getting a little bit of stretching, a little bit of strengthening, a little bit of balance, a little bit of endurance and a lot of fun, hopefully. So even in your home, we can still do, we can still be therapeutic. We can still move around. Can you see Andrea, she's still moving and kicking her legs around. <laughs> I, I see some of people still moving. Good, good job. So what we do is we are, this is our statement of our profession. Is we are transforming society by optimizing movement to improve the human experience. So I'm hopeful that I was able to improve your human experience a little bit today and give you some new ideas on keeping moving and I'm sure the students did that in the breakout rooms by getting you moving and being creative with moving around. If you feel like you need physical therapy, I, I, if anything hurts or anything was difficult during that session, you can, you can have direct access to your physical therapist by making an appointment and you can see your physical therapist for 10 visits for up to within a 45 day period without needing a physician's referral. But if you, a lot of times insurance will cover it when you have a physician's referral. And that can be from any of your physicians, your primary care doctor, your knee doctor, your sometimes even podiatrist. We will we take referrals from podiatrists. It depends on, your, on our, our practice. It depends on your insurance, really. I wanted to just point out some of the resources that are at the end of your slide deck before you all leave. Um, and one is the information about my class here, the Adelante Move Forward Exercise class. And Yoga USC is not only yoga classes at USC, but in the community surrounding USC. So it's a great resource for, for yoga exercise, which is a great balance of strength and balance and coordination. Um, a little bit of endurance, not so much cardiovascular endurance, but it has, you, do, uh, you can do uh, walking to uh, help along with your yoga. Um, but what I wanted to point out, because I think that this might apply to a lot of people in this room, is the Geriatric Assessment Program. It's a comprehensive program at USC where you will be evaluated by a physician, a pharmacist, social work, PT, OT, and get a very comprehensive evaluation for health and wellness. So the link is What's here that? for that assessment program. If you're wondering, what is your assessment of your wellness? This might be a good place to start. And a PT will evaluate you there as well and see if we can make any suggestions. There's lots of websites for, for fitness. So I, I wanted to provide them all here. In, in addition to the pictures that were shown in your handout today that you did, there's all these links here that are all credible resources for exercise. Some with videos, some with pictures, some with exercise plans for a week and so much more, okay? Sorry, I, didn't, I don't wanna rush through that, but that's all there for you to look through. And it's all in your PDF packet. It's all in the email if you registered for this event and it will be on the um, Emeriti website as well. We'll have to do this again. I, am, I, I, I wanna let everybody, if we have to go, feel, please feel free to leave, including students, but I will stay on for a little bit if you have any questions for me. Thank you so much. Um... Kimmy, uh, we're on first name basis, even though you're a, a professor. Um, For sure. And, and, you know, we can't thank you enough. You've really made such a huge difference. And we wish we had more time. 
Um, and I know it's very difficult to get your students together with you. And my apologies that I'm, I wasn't very good with the breakouts this sessions, but um, we would love to do this again. Uh, if you get a chance to have some time, maybe we do it in the summer. Um, if your students want to, want to get more practice. So uh, there's- that was, that was new, right? Group, group practice. I think we learn a lot of therapy one-on-one -on -one and it is a different practice to learn, to watch multiple people moving, but I saw so much awesome stuff happening in all of the rooms. <laughs> I, I wanted to say, can you hear me? Yes, can you hear me? Yvonne, I can hear you. I, I wanted to say that I'm so grateful that I miss, I, I come to the uh, August or September session and I practice like for four months and then after that, I don't I forget all the things that I promised to practice. So many twice a year would be very good. Thank you. Thank you for that feedback. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll it's a good to have a check in, right? A good way yes. to be accountable this way. And then you can all, you can be come back on here and tell me, I've been exercising this much and doing this new exercise. So I'd love to hear that. I'd love to regroup with, with you. And I encourage you to bring a friend next time. Definitely. Definitely. And there are so many exercises in the book that's online uh, and then you can order to have it. Well, I don't think they send it anymore, but um, just just so that we know some of the basics from that exercise book. Um, it's really an excellent resource and uh, as I, we're getting ourselves to do it. I love that warm up. Stretching, you know. Is it this one? Yeah, you got to see my yeah. dance moves. <laughs> yes, that's that's it. Yvonne has it. She's holding it up right there. That's there actually one of my questions. Go ahead, Lisa. Oh, thank you. I um, so I'm pretty good about doing my walk every day. I haven't been good at doing the stretching um, or a warm up or anything. Do they have to be done at the same time, or could I do stretching in the morning and my walk in the afternoon? That that's fine. That's fine. It. As long as you you get it in there, I think it's fine. Um, I I've, oftentimes I'm doing it when I'm drying the dishes or when I'm I'm making my end of the day phone calls to people to cut to check in on them. So whenever you have the opportunity, try to do it. And if it's something that you regularly do, like if you br you brush your teeth every evening, so if you do your balance exercises and, and associate it with something you do every day, then you'll always do it every day a little bit every day. Good question. Anybody else have strategies for how you're keeping um, moving during this time? I think I do that a lot. Like I'm, I'm drying dishes every day. So I try to do a little bit of balance when I do that. When I brush my teeth, I try to do a little bit of stretch every time I do that. So um, that's helped me out. I definitely, in this sitting position, my hips are really stiff. So <laughs> I need to make sure I'm out of this sitting position for some of the things that I do during the day. I, I have a question. You mentioned that when you brush your teeth, you do stretch. Which stretch do you do when you brush your teeth? I, I like to do my calf stretch at that time. So and, and a lot of my standing ones are I'm sort of in my stretch. So okay. I can still brush my teeth. <laughs> Any, any of those, I, if I'm really, I'm a little bit more challenged with my balance in the morning, so it's harder for me to do the one-legged, like, half on uh, quad stretches and things like that, but. Um, you have a lower yeah. back a stretch when you do something, for example, for you, when you wash your dishes or something, a lower back. Something. Lower back stretches, yeah. I, the one I, I did is when we were cooling down, kind of doing a, um, like arching and extending. Okay. Those are ones. So maybe do, you know, I drive five plates, put it down, and I'm gonna do ten, five of these. And then I'm gonna put the five plates away, and then I'm gonna do maybe turn in a different direction. So I'll break up all of my tasks. If I can't do it at the same time, I might break up the tasks to include um, some stretching. Thank you. Yeah. Um, Vic Victoria, I think you, you had a question. Yes. Yeah. 
Oh, I was just going to say that something I do, which I find is successful is before I get up, I sort of leave my eyes closed just even for like a minute. And I, because I have a bad back, I just bring my knees in and I allow myself to sort of have that stretch and to do like a little of a side stretch. And I, I found that that actually helps me a lot. Just having that little extra minute or two, like at the beginning of the day. So in bed, that, that happy baby kind of pose. Yeah. Right? It feels, it feels lazy, but it's productive. It really is. I have uh, hip problems. And one of our physical therapists reminded me, like Kimmy, to, to, to put one leg up and do the stretch forward. So I, I put my one, one foot up on, on the bathtub or whatever and lift one arm and do that stretch. I, have no, I don't have as much pain at night. At when I'm sleeping, if I do the stretches before I go to bed. I like that. Yes, yeah, so if you go, go to sleep happy, you wake up happy, right? <laughs> yeah, and I see in the chat, like some people mentioning like um, taking breaks during drives or when you walk, just take, a, take a, a known break at the half point or even at any convenient spot and do a stretch. So every time I pass that picnic table, go ahead and do a stretch or do an exercise or do a balance thing at that part. Um, I, I, like, I like that. Use that exercise machine. Um, there's more and more exercise equipment popping up in, in neighborhood community parks. So, and they have pictures on them, but if you're, if you're not sure how to use them, um, we do that with our exercise class. Or if you, if you have somebody that's knowledgeable in your neighborhood that is able to show you, I, I think they're heavily, they're very underused. Um, well, part of it was they were taped up for a while. <laughs> I know that the equipment in my area, they taped everything up. They saran wrapped it all so we couldn't use it, but now it's all available. Um, take your wipes with you and, and use them because they're, they are good ways to get resistance in your exercise program. Some of them are more challenging than others. Um, some of them are even meant for a wheelchair to roll up in, in between them and, and push and do things like that. You can stand on them, you can sit on them. They're really meant for all levels of ability and mobility. So I like that, thank you. We have a balance. I notice once in a while uh, when I wake up, I get a hamstring on one of my calves. What causes a hamstring and how do you get out of it? Like a spasm? Yeah, like it's, it's, it hurts a lot. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, some, sometimes it's, uh, oftentimes it's multifactorial, but a, a muscle that's too tight might tend to spasm more often than one that's not too tight. So stretching when it's not in spasm is, is sometimes more effective than waiting till it's kind of spasming on you and then trying to stretch it. Um, but also sometimes it is other things like your medication could cause spasms. Dehydration can cause spasms. Um, so so that we're not drinking water throughout the night. So by the morning, we need to take a, a good glass of water um, before our muscles stop spasming. So, or electrolyte imbalances. So it could be multiple things. Um, some people try um, bananas or taking supplements, but I'm hesitant to recommend supplements because not everybody is deficient in their supplements so it does it does something if you can see a nutritionist or your um, primary care doctor they can check for magnesium levels potassium levels in your system and let you know if really it is an electrolyte balance um, but yeah there's so there's multiple things that could be there um, but I mean tr you try try some things out but just be careful if it's not working out then I would see you can you can um, self-refer to a physical therapist and they can help you out. Kimmy, how about the grocery bag? Now the grocery bag seems to be getting heavier. Grocery bags? Just going to the grocery. The grocery bag seems to be heavier. Yeah, I mean, we're trying to pack it all in our, our reusable bags or <laughs> and getting them all into one bag. It gets a little heavy. I, my suggestion with, with groceries is not to use just your arms. Lift the bags and see if you can use your legs to do some of the lifting and carrying. You can use the cart. As, it's not a bad idea to use the cart if you're carrying it for long distances. Um, even like, so that's just like our students carrying really heavy books. Now, mostly they're carrying lap, heavy laptops now, but my, in my day, <laughs> you know, a lot of big, heavy books to carry and you have to uh, make sure that you have the right equipment. 
So there are some times we don't want to use it for exercise and sometimes where it might not be efficient and it might be overuse to be trying to carry it all the time. Lisa had a question about, uh, uh, you know, uh, balance. As we did it in our little group, but uh, a recommendation for some simple, uh, safe balance exercises. Perfect. That, that book has actually several, uh, several exercises to use for balance that are really good. So my, my just in, information for you all is if you're, if you're standing and you're not a little bit wobbly, that's not going to stimulate any change in your balance. You need to be a little wobbly in whatever practice you're doing for your balance in order to stimulate a change in your body. If you're falling over every second, then that's too much. There's not enough time in your balance challenge for your body to say, hmm, I'm gonna make this adjustment or that adjustment, right? So whether it's standing on one foot, standing on two foot with your feet narrowed together, standing with one foot in front of the other, any, any, or standing on, on a yoga mat, right? That yoga mat that's kind of squishy, that yoga mat that's folded in half, that's even more squishy. Um, standing outside on your grass versus the concrete. So different services are all ways to make it Make it so you're a little bit wobbly, but not falling over. I, I did see some people doing balance. They were close to a wall, so you could feel like comfortable challenging yourself, but not feeling like you're going to fall over. Because the last thing you want to do is have a, a fall. Then, then that's 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 going to be detrimental to your health. So we want to be safe with everything, but still challenging. Good question. I feel like challenge, the balance challenge is one of the hardest ones to, to titrate to make sure we're doing it right. And so sometimes you don't realize how dependent you are on your vision. Um, but if you take, if you carefully take your vision away and close your eyes, you realize how much your balance is kind of challenged and impaired. So instead of just closing your eyes, I know that was a recommendation in the book, is instead of just closing your eyes, distract your eyes. So try looking to your right and to, looking to your left while you're doing a balance thing and you realize how challenging it is and how much it's easier to just look at one thing and concentrate on your balance. Yeah, I think we could even have a whole session on balance, a whole session on strengthening, a whole session on dancing. <laughs> Great idea. Yeah, whatever, whatever you can do, we, and, we'll, and we'll have it open for the community and alumni and whatever. Uh, that's definitely up to your, um, your time frame and what would be good for, for experientially for your students in terms of practicum and all that kind of thing. We can accommodate. We yes, will. Thank, you. thank you very much for creating an opportunity for them to engage with you and, and strategize with all of you. Um, it, it definitely is, is a fun challenge for, for me and for them. <laughs> Um, so I think there'll be a survey, right, um, Jeanette, that'll, that'll go out and, and definitely give us that feedback on what you want to have more on and what, what really worked well for you and what, what was too quick <laughs> um, so that we can, we can try to budget out more time. But uh, definitely thank you for giving, giving your hour of your afternoon to move around and do different things because I think it, Safer at home, um, sometimes we just do what we feel safe with, but, but thinking outside of the box and moving in different ways is, is healthy for us. For sure. Aloha Friday, yeah. <laughs> well, thank, thank you so much uh, to you, Professor Yamada, and <laughs> all these wonderful doctoral students. We really appreciate your being with us today and sharing your expertise. Round of applause to everybody. Very much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. The fight on sign will win tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Everybody take care. Thank Bye -bye. you. Thank you.